racism doesn't exist. Berg show, ladies and gentlemen, and we turn our attention to a very serious issue, one which, surprise, surprise, uh, you won't hear about in the in the mainstream media. For instance, um, an attack that happened on Monday, October 14th, not far from where I'm sitting in good old Brooklyn, New York, where I am originally from, a group of 10 black youths, one of them a 12-year-old girl, pummeled a husband and wife in Brooklyn after peppering the couple with racial slurs. Uh, get those crackers, some of them screamed, according to court papers. Get that white whore. The confrontation erupted about 7 o'clock uh, in the evening as the marauding group across Avenue U at East 58th Street near King's Plaza Shopping Mall, where my mom used to work when I was a kid. Um, and uh, Ron Russo, with 30, his wife, Valana, um, had the green light. The husband honked at the group to get out of the way. And that was the end of it. You don't honk a group of rowdy kids. Now, this was black on white crime. Now, I could go just to some another recent story. Uh, pack of black youths terrorized a city. This is out of Raleigh, North Carolina. That was October 5th story. Uh, if you want to go back a little bit uh, to, um, let's see, uh, family picnic turns to horror thanks to black mob. That's a headline. That was from June of this year. You want to go back to uh, 2011. Black mobs attack white patrons outside the Wisconsin State Fair. But, folks, it's happening in Baltimore, Philly, Chicago, New York, St. Louis, but in other places where you wouldn't expect it to happen. And joining us now is a man who has written so many of these stories and has now written a book uh, about all of this. It's called White Girl Bleed a Lot. And we welcome in um, our an investigative reporter who's done such great work on this and other issues. And uh, you've read him um, in, in, in various publications and you've seen his work all over, especially at worldnetdaily.com. And we welcome in uh, Colin Flaherty. Hey, Colin, how are you? Honored to be here. Well, honored to have you because you have the guts to write about and talk about what people won't write about and talk about. Now, first of all, explain the title of the book. Well, the book is about an epidemic of black mob violence all over the country, and even crazier how the press ignores, condones, excuses, and even denies it. So the title of the book comes from Milwaukee, July the 4th, uh, uh, 50 to 100 black people looted a convenience store on video. They took their candy and groceries to a nearby park where they ran into 10 white kids, where they beat them up really badly. At one point, a black woman is standing over a white woman. She motions to her friends. She looks down at the woman and, and says, white girl bleed a lot. Yeah. Everybody thought that was very funny. Yeah, yeah. No, I, rem I remember that incident. Even, the police did not even take a report until the people went to talk radio. They went to every, you know, they started kicking up a fuss. Multiply that by five, six, seven, eight hundred. That's what the book is about. And 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 I mean, obviously, it doesn't fit the agenda of uh, of the mainstream media at all, as so many issues don't. But this is violence. I mean, this is different than you know uh, a book written by Stephen Jimenez that says Matthew Shepard wasn't murdered the way he was murdered. Uh, this was different than you know favoring one political party over another. This is different than saying oh global warming is real and it's man-made. This is violence. This is people getting beaten up, getting killed, getting maimed, um, and and they still ignore it. How, why is that? Uh, you know, I'm glad you said what you just said because that's exactly the way I look at it. The, the violence really, really strikes at the foundation of a civilized society, and so that's how I, how important I see it too. I, I don't, I don't do the why the reporters ignore it. I only document how they ignore it, over and over and over and over, and. Uh, and, and how astonished I am that they do that. Yeah, and I should read the, 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 the title of the book is White Girl Bleed a Lot, and then uh, The Return of Racial Violence to America and How the Media um, uh, Ignore It. And, uh, you know, you could point to there are so many really chilling, horrific stories in this book. Uh, and before we get to that, but th there's been a rash. I mean, in, in the last year or so, and, and in the last few months, I mean, we just came off, I guess, the summer, maybe that peaks it. But then again, I mean, you, you see, and you see so many of it, so much of it on video for those outlets online uh, and, 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 you know, that will show it in WND that gets its hands on these videos. When you see these mobs running into a store, uh, when you read about these stories that, you know, what happens in a McDonald's or in a fast food restaurant or in the parking lot and these, these you know, these white victims getting really just uh, beaten sense 
defenseless, and 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 it, it's it's frightening. It really is frightening. Sometimes the victims are white. Sometimes they're Asian. Sometimes they're gay. Sometimes they're 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 old, young. Sometimes they're black. Uh, you don't have to go back months. Let's just talk about the last seven days. You mentioned Brooklyn. What about New Haven, Connecticut, over the last week? There were 500 black people who left something called a black, uh, a, 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 an all-black affair. They left this party, fought at the party, went outside, uh, fought outside, destroyed property outside, and did this at two other places, Virginia State University, an all-black college. Two to three hundred black people rampaged through the college, fighting, destroying property. One pe- one person got arrested. Nobody got arrested in New Haven. What about last month in a suburb of Rochester? Five hundred black people fighting at a movie theater. Then they take the fight outside. The police had to take out batons and were fighting with a lot of these people. Um, nobody got arrested. I'm telling you, this is okay. University of Minnesota last week. Just a few days ago, on campus, uh, a group of black people were uh, uh, beating and robbing white students on Saturday night. This is just a few nights ago. And so this is happening. What about, uh, to what about in New York? The train going from New York to Hoboken just a few nights ago, a group of black people rampaged through the train, beating and robbing people. So this is happening at epidemic levels very nasty stuff. Right, nobody's you, connecting the dots. That's why I wrote. The well, book. that all right. Nobody's connecting the dots. Now, uh, uh, that that means, in my mind, that you see dots that would connect these. And do you believe? Uh, well, 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 you get. I won't even ask the question. You you connect the dots for me. Why do you think that this is resur- resurfaced? Why do you think this is happening? I don't. I don't know why. I just. I wrote the book because I wrote the book for for people who deny it's happening, and so. I didn't think it would be a very good idea to, 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 to try to explain something if people did not even believe it was happening. So when I say connect the dots, here's what I mean. I mean, like, okay, so in Brooklyn, it was actually an unusual case where the people involved actually used racial epithets against that white couple. Mm-hmm. They, they right. put a little bow on it. Just, so just because somebody doesn't say the little, little magic words, exact same thing happened to Schenectady, by the way, a few weeks ago. Uh, by itself, every incident is not important. But when you do look at them over over a period of a year or two, and how often they occur, and how exponentially disproportionate it is, it, it is black mob violence. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I say that these are racial events. We're talking to Colin Flaherty, uh, author of White, of White Girl Bleed a Lot. The return of racial violence to America and how the media ignore it. Um, you, you, you don't think? I, no, I don't think because I don't think that these kids know this. But uh, you know, when we have a civil rights department in this country that, according to one of the uh, career workers there uh, in that department, left because he said they're only interested in prosecuting violations against blacks and not violations against whites. I guess it doesn't trickle down to street level um, uh, that, that quickly, or, or you know, or through the news. I don't think kids pick up on that. But let's, so let's let, let's talk about some. Uh, uh, t- talk about Beat Whitey Night. Where was Beat Whitey Night? So Beat Whitey Night is at the Iowa State Fair. For three nights in a row, groups of black people inside and outside the Iowa State Fair were beating white people. A police officer put it in a report. People were shouting Beat Whitey Night. So here's the punchline of the story. No, the no, cop- pun, no pun intended, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, sorry. Uh, cops, the cops go to Lori, the cop spokesman woman was Lori Loverato, and uh, the reporters go to Lori and say, hey, what's up with all these black people beating up all these white people? Is that happening? She said, yeah, it's happening. Don't know why, but it's happening. She got fired the next day for that. Really? Telling the truth about racial violence in, 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 in Des Moines, Iowa. Now, if it happens in Des Moines, it's also happening in Cedar Rapids. What you, forget New York, forget the Bronx, forget Brooklyn. What do you think the rest of the country is like? Yeah, and 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 then there's one more where the uh, the police chief of uh, of uh, Chicago blamed uh, racial violence on Sarah Palin and the Pilgrims. And that's yeah. not a rock group, by the way. That's those, those are two distinct, uh, you know, entities. Yeah. 
and, and that that's kind of a, the psychiatrists tell us we're only as sick as our secrets. So what are we more secretive about than race and racial violence? And all of a sudden, all the sick stuff all over the country is becoming normal. So we ask a police chief in Chicago, Chief, what is responsible for this incredible level of violence in the black community? And, and, and he said he blamed it on the Pilgrims or Sarah Palin. I wouldn't now. Ten years ago, I wouldn't have believed that because I would have said somebody's making that up. But then I saw it on video, both things. I put the videos, links to the video in the book. Unreal. And so that's how crazy it this is. whole denial and situation It is. That's why that, you know, I just gave a speech yesterday on media bias, and, and that's why this book is must-reading. Uh, you know, there are bad white people, too, but we hear about them. And there are bad white kids, and we hear about them. If a group of whites ever went after blacks, we would hear about it, rightfully so. And so should we hear about it when it's the other way, whether they're going after whites or Asians or whomever, uh, but we don't. And uh, it's a shame, and thanks for writing the book, White Girl Bleed a Lot, um, um, and good luck with it. Uh, You've been with a lot of women. It's manhood hour. What is a man? What is a man? man. It's an adult man. human male. Manhood. Hillary or President Trump? I voted for Hillary Clinton. Uh, beta. Beta male. Yo. A man is a male who turned to man. Male right, be right, and lead the way. Beta male.